Hey guys, it's Leanna and I'm here today to react to one star reviews for my favorite books. So I'm pretty sure people know that I quite frequently post rant reviews. I don't, despite the comments I sometimes get, I don't do this on purpose, but I have a lot of feelings when I hate a book. So I don't set out to read books that I think I'm going to hate, but if I read a book that I hate, I don't hold back from ranting about it. So that being the case, I thought it only fair to expose myself to rants about my favorite books. So I'm just going to go on Goodreads and today we're going to do three of my favorite books. Uh, not like every favorite book in the world for me. So we're just going to start there and then if this is fun for me and fun for you, we can do it again because I have other favorite books. Today I'm going to look at one star reviews on Goodreads for A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie, Eliza Black Lamora by Scott Lynch, and The Wolf by Leo Caru. Let us away. <laughs> A Little Hatred by Joe Abercrombie Crombie is the first book in the Age of Madness trilogy, which is his new trilogy, and the second book of that trilogy is coming out this month. As of the filming of this video, it's not out yet. I don't know when this video is going up. <laughs> I read A Little Hatred twice. I read it when it came out, loved it, gave it five stars. It dethroned my former favorite Abercrombie book and became my favorite Abercrombie book, so I like it <laughs> a lot. I picked this over like Vester of Cold or over Blade itself because I figure the one star reviews are either going to be from people who have read his work before and don't like what he's doing now because I feel like I mean I always recommend reading his other work first not starting here or it's people who read this first and probably shouldn't have but I guess we'll find out what their complaints are but that's why I picked a little hatred instead of any of the other ever how books I could have picked <laughs> okay so uh just looking now the first one star review the whole thing has a strong whiff of epilogue to it I wish I didn't read it to be honest I wish I'd kept my memory of the hero okay so this person has read previous books before I wish I'd kept my memory of the heroes intact and left off there I wish I'd left off when there was some actual grimness and darkness mixed in with the nonsense back when it felt poignant and new instead of having to read about cowardly princes and brave princesses but alas um there have always been excuse me but there have always been cowardly princes in Abercrombie books? Have you not read the first plot? I mean he, all he mentioned was the heroes so maybe they, they didn't read the first saw trilogy maybe i don't that'd be really weird to just read the heroes though apparently someone told joe that he's really good at writing strong female characters in quotes <laughs> and apparently he believed them so this time around there are about a dozen or so and they're all the same character disagree <laughs> strong disagree let's let them finish their thought the male characters two or three are just brutes and oafs and talkative incompetent fools wandering around in need of orders painfully cliche at this point like seven or eight books in okay so he's read them all felt like i was trapped in a cw show and couldn't get out only the grace of stephen pacey for comfort that's the narrator of the audiobook and he is an amazing narrator, so good. I really hope he was paid well enough by his publishers to justify this sub-quality money grab. One star is a bit harsh. Abercrombie is still a master wordsmith. Yeah, he fucking is. It's just this story didn't need to be told and is made out of nothing but caricature and cliche. It's worth two stars probably, but I deducted one for sheer disappointment. I spent a lot of time looking forward to this only to have to suffer through chapters of Savine complaining about tight corsets and other Pirates of the Caribbean level shenanigans. Um, <laughs> oh my god, I disagree with everything that this person said. Okay, so Abercrombie does write females well in my opinion, and there was always bumbling- okay, so this- this portrait that they're painting of bumbling males and strong female characters being like the whole thing. I mean, literally in the first Law trilogy, when our little band that Logan Ninefingers is with, Logan and Baez and Giselle and uh, Pharaoh. Pharaoh has like a head on her shoulders. She's really snarky. She's really good in a fight. She's really scrappy. And she's so annoyed all the time at how useless Giselle is. She's like okay with Logan, but like it's really because he goes berserker and she's like kind of scary but like also uh, I'm here for that and she's frustrated as fuck with Baez who seems to be like oh he is a frustrating character so like that dynamic we've seen before Artie was always way smarter and way more witty than Giselle so when Giselle and Artie were together he was always just like oh, blah, blah, boobs I love you and Artie was always just like whatever <laughs> so that dynamic was already there like honestly Savine is a lot like her mother Artie. It's, I, what, what book, 
what books does this person reading that they think that this isn't something Abercrombie did before? It's, it's, and Savine is a great character. And like Savine complaining about corsets isn't like a part of the Caribbean joke. It's, oh my God, this person, oh. Savine complaining about it is actually really fantastic in my opinion. Savine complains about a lot of things internally where she's, it's painting the portrait of her as a person who appreciates the power that image creation gives you and she knows that part of her power comes from her name but a lot of her and her money of course but a lot of power also comes from how she presents herself to people so internally she's like miserable because her corset is too tight and she's you know there's a part where she's actually started her period and she's like in, in an enormous amount of pain because she, uh, she's having cramps from her period but she's grinning and bearing it because she's the beautiful erudite rich lady so her complaining about and i think she there are two complaints about her corset when she's on her period and like all of this like as a woman i haven't don't have to wear corsets but i mean like having to wear like office like slacks and trousers and that kind of thing like when i've been on my period is a nightmare it's really painful i can't even imagine wearing a corset so it just it was abercrombie frequently talked about men and their junk and men talking about like all of men's issues so like it's only fair that he does the same for women so but this person is like oh but if you're mentioning corsets you're like oh it's just so cliche like no if you're writing about men you have different problems from the problems that a woman has if your woman is a main character that's the stuff she's dealing with so that's what she's thinking about it would be weird if Savine didn't think about those things oh my god ugh ugh I hate this review <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> of course I do uh, next one star review. I'm going to make a foray back into the world of Abercrombie's Grimdark, which I had abandoned after thoroughly enjoying his opening trilogy, but not so enamored with what followed, and for why, you ask? With an ampersand? <laughs> well, I heard the family name Glockta is involved, and another ampersand. That brought me a running mania. <laughs> Glockta brings me a running, too. So, so far, we are in agreement. I hope I have made the right decision. Wait, so they haven't read it yet for the Eva one star? Oh, no, they're taking us through their emotional journey. <laughs> Well, by page 50, I'm bored. It's all dialogue. There's no world building, no revelations, no detail about what's going on in this world. Just with no tea. Endless introductions of bland characters who are predominantly female, too. Which is negative? <laughs> and young, for the most part, giving it a predominantly YA vibe. I can't really relate to this at all. It's certainly not grim, and it's not dark. Done by page 87, skip reading characters already, and it's a DNF with the obligatory one star rating. I've read a few reviews which are DNF and giving it three stars. Knew I shouldn't, ha shouldn't have left well alone. I think it, they meant should have left well enough alone. Okay, Savine is like 30 years old, so that's not young. Rika is young, but so was Giselle when we met him in the first law. So like, it's okay if your main character is a dude who's young, but if it's a girl, like, oh no, then that's YA. Like, also there's there's a lot of other characters too. Like, what's that guy's name? <laughs> who teaches them how to fight? Oh my God, I can't remember his name. But there's this new character who I absolutely ate up his chapters. He's like an old hand at fighting and he's teaching them how to fight but also teaching them like, also like fighting is like, you want to avoid fighting if at all possible. Like, why do you think I'm still alive? God damn it, what was that character's name? <sighs> well, anyway, he's old. <laughs> yeah, and, and Orso, he's also like 30 years old. They're not, they're not young. They're privileged, so they're a little... Also, um, what's his name? Who comes back to his family after being in the war and he's got like major PTSD and also like rage issues. His daughter is young, but she's not the POV character, he is. And he's gotta be like in his 40s, I think. I'm not sure it ever says. What is this person talking about? The only young, young people are Leo Dan Brock and, and Rika. Everyone else is like 30 plus. What? What the fuck? What the fuck? I just love all the ones that bring up the fact that there's women in it as like an objective negative. Like, fuck off. Okay, next one's a review. I'll just leave my review here. I mean, uh, okay, this is a site for reviewing, so... Okay, Captain Obvious. Because I can't seem to figure out a way to review everything by same author at once. Wait, they're reviewing all Abercrombie books? What? What? <laughs> Dear sir, and I really hope you'll get to see this. What? You know, he has like a website and a blog and like an email. Like you can actually contact him if you want to. It's an option. You can also tweet at him and he's pretty responsive. So there are options. <laughs> anyway, I loathe you. 
<laughs> okay. You have ruined me for fantasy? Wait, they gave a one star review? What they- You have made reading fantasy and some other genres so much less enjoyable for me. I used to be able to read almost anything without so much a twitch of an eyebrow, but after devouring any and all of your writing, all that seems to be in the back of my mind while reading is, how would Abercrombie have written this fight? Why can't anyone today, except for Abercrombie, write a coherent and realistic battle? How would Abercrombie have made this flat piece of wannabe furniture that the author used as a character into a fully fleshed out person? What would Abercrombie do? Okay, so far we are in agreement. I feel the same way. Why is this a one star review? <laughs> That's no way to enjoy reading. Please, dear reader, stay away from this man's writing. It will ruin you too. You won't be able to enjoy any book ever and the world will turn into a dim and dark swamp of sorrow because there just isn't enough Abercrombie to get you through the time between publication of his new works. You have been warned. So they do like Abercrombie. That's fucked up. Why would you leave him in a one-star review on his newest book? <sighs> um, if he does see this, I don't think you're gonna get the reaction that you wanted because that's so up why would you do that i don't understand what's wrong with you <laughs> um okay we'll do one more because that wasn't even a negative review that was just weird hmm imagine santa and glockta were captured by the gurkish and they threatened to torture him for years but then the cavalry arrived he was rescued safe and sound and for the rest of the books kept telling people what a traumatizing experience he'd had that's the vibe I got from this book. Bad things threaten to happen to the main characters, but they don't happen. I think from some other author it would be okay, but Abercrombie is the master of grimdark after all. I felt there was exceptionally little of grim and dark in this book. It was toothless and kind of boring. It actually read like a YA with lots and lots of sex. Did they finish the book? Because it's really fucking grimdark. Just thinking about the scene, mild spoilers, where Savine has gone to one of the factories that she owns and she sees the conditions of the workers and is horrified just in time for there to be like a populist uprising that she gets caught in the middle of and nearly dies. So the only way this person could have been satisfied is if Savine actually died. But that was pretty harrowing what she went through. And she's like the most privileged character other than the fucking prince in the book. I'm just... <laughs> Ricka's entire village burns. The, the book opens with her escaping after her village has been burned. So it happened before the book started, but so did Glockta's torture. He op we, when we first meet Glockta, he's already been tortured. So that should... Be what? <laughs> okay. 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 These people are just... I don't, I don't know what they wanted. <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. To the Lies of Loch Lamora now by Scott Lynch, which I've read twice as well. Actually, all the books I'm doing today, I've read twice. I didn't intend it to be that thing to unify this assortment, but it's true. I've read each of these books twice. Um, I read Lies of Loch Lamora the first time years ago, years and years ago, and then reread it like, uh, I think it was last year, beginning of last year, because I it hadn't been a while and I was worried that I wouldn't still love it. And I do still love it. It's fantastic. I had to give a one star because I literally hated this book. I mean, yeah, that's what that means. But I also have to say that I'm not being fair by giving it a one star because it was well written and would probably be a favorite among people who like this type of story and don't mind lengthy descriptions of every effing thing. Okay. So as I mentioned, this book was a buddy read. When did you mention that? With the awesome peeps at the BBB group. They made it almost bearable because many of them felt the same way as me about the book. And suffering with another person makes it better somehow. It does. The story is about a guy named Locke who is a thief. He has absolutely no conscience. That's not true. Although you think he might at one point. He steals from the rich, but doesn't give to the poor. He murders, he tortures, he punches old ladies in the face. You think I'm kidding on the last one? I'm not. But we are supposed to like him, I guess, and root for him when he gets screwed over by another thief. That's a little tough for me because I believe in the old sayings, live by the sword, die by the sword, and my favorite, lie down with dogs and you're gonna get fleas. Okay. Like the book, it's not... When you open the book, like, unless you didn't read the synopsis, you know it's about a thief. So the book wouldn't be believable if he was, like, Dudley Do-Right. 
but was a thief. So I wasn't a huge fan of the main characters, and I wasn't a fan of the pages and pages of descriptions that made me want to get a gun and shoot myself in the head. Well, that escalated quickly. <laughs> then there was a bunch of time jumps. I am not talking about alternating past present chapters, although that was part of it, but also time jumps within the time jumps. It was the inception of time jumping. What? No, it's not. It just tells two parallel narratives. One lock is a kid and one lock in the present day. And you jump back and forth between the two, but that's it. We got to read about something that happened. Then we backpedaled to an hour earlier. Oh yeah, it did that. Kind of like Guy Ritchie movies do that to show you the crime and then how we got to the crime. But it's not hard to follow. To read about how and why it happened. Then we were 10 years in the past. Yeah, because those are two different plot lines. Now we are learning something about some other people in another time period called an interlude, should be called info dump lewd, between many of the chapters. Just settle the fuck down, people. Start your story from the beginning and tell it to me in a cohesive manner. Sheesh. So you want to start with Locke as a kid and not see him as an adult until book two? <laughs> mm, strong disagree. <laughs> Finally, I thought there may be a saving romance angle. Saving romance angle? The book's only good if it has romance in it? Fuck off. When it was mentioned that Locke had a lost love. How cool I thought. She might show up at some point and save the day. Also dressed up in part of a con. But no, don't get your hopes up. This girl never shows up. She, I guess, is a teaser to make us read the next book in hopes of meeting her. Frankly, I don't want to meet her that badly. I'll pass. Well, she, she's not in the next book, so you wouldn't be happy. Um, I don't know what this person was expecting, honestly. Like, their complaints sound like they're from someone who didn't know they'd be picking up a book about a thief. Like, the time jumping thing is the only part where I'm like, that's a matter of taste. And I like the way that it plays with time. I love Guy Ritchie movies, and it's like a Guy Ritchie movie. But wanting it to be told more linearly, I think is m more boring, but I appreciate why they might feel that's needlessly gimmicky and confusing. That's the only thing that I could say, like, you know, fair play, like, that's a taste thing. But the rest, like, it's about a thief. So, like, he's, he's stealing things that just not on the moral good side. So I don't know what you expected there. You would only like to if it had a romance in it? Like... What? And the descriptions? I don't remember it being that description heavy, honestly. There's a lot of books that are description heavy. Like, Name of the Wind is description heavy. Yet I don't, I don't remember Lies of Locke Lamar being that way. It's more bantery and quick and fun. And there's a lot of descriptions of food, I remember that, because it always made me hungry, but Nevernight is description heavy. Holy Lord, this person should not read Nevernight if they don't like morally reprehensible characters and descriptions. <laughs> Nevernight will, <laughs> that will be their downfall. Okay, here's the next one star review. This one looks kind of funny. Blah, 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 I'm a thief. Meh, DNF. <laughs> okay. Okay, so I get to be the odd man out this time. The cranky old curmudgeon who failed to like a wildly popular book. Okay. Many of my Goodreads friends loved this book, which was hyped as a mix between The Godfather and Ocean's Eleven, and that sounded great. I've never heard it compared to The Godfather. I've heard it compared to Ocean's Eleven and Robin Hood but not Godfather. And that sounded great. It also started pretty good with a Fagin and Artful Dodger type situation. Yeah, it definitely does have an Oliver Twist. The, the kid's plot line when Locke's a kid is very Oliver Twist. I also thought the writing was akin to Brent Weeks and China Meville. I don't know either of those authors, so I cannot comment. And then the rest of the book happened. I just did not care anymore about the story of the characters and I'm foggy at why and how popular it is. I mean, uh, I sympathize with that feeling because that's how I feel when I read things like Kings of the Wild. And I'm like, did y'all read the same book as me? Life's too short, too many great books to read, and I invoked my 100 page rule. It was a stretch just to get that far. That just made me sad. They didn't really say why they didn't like it. That I take issue with. They said they didn't like it, but not why. That's not a review. You may as well just leave it at one star then if you're not going to tell us why you didn't like it. Okay, well I can't really react to that much because they didn't say what they didn't like. I can't be like, you're wrong! <laughs> okay, here's one that I take umbrage with. I skimmed it quickly. Pick this one up on recommendation from someone here on Goodreads. Couldn't finish it. I was bored to tears by the horribly generic con heist plot. I've seen it done better in about half dozen movies this year, including Ant-Man, which was a lot of fun. So already I would like to say this person didn't finish it. And they don't know where the plot goes because the beginning of the book, <laughs> the heist in the beginning of the book is not what the whole book is about. So maybe they still wouldn't have liked it, but anyway, 
spend your money on a ticket to see that one rather than on this book. You'll probably have a better time of it. That just goes to show how done to death this plotline is. I mean, freaking Dickens used it almost 200 years ago, and it was probably just as done to death then as it is now. Hell, Shakespeare used it more than 200 years before that, even, and it was still probably done to death. Even then, something that has been done to death is not entertaining. It needs something more or no one is going to care. This book didn't have that something more and so I really have no reason to continue reading it to the end. When I start having to force myself to read, it's time to find something more to my liking. Again, you may not have liked the writing style, but the heist that is being set up in the beginning of the book is not what the book is about. <laughs> I even told my friends when we were buddy reading it, I was, when they were like, it's it's okay, but like heists aren't my thing. And I was like, it's actually not about the heist. So keep reading. And then they got to the part where the book really goes, gets going. And they're like, oh, you're right. It's not about that at all. <laughs> oh shit. And I'm like, yeah, oh shit. <laughs> the characters are entertaining and the dialogue often amusing, but I found the overuse of profanity to be annoying, unnecessary, and somewhat childish. I mean, you just brought up Shakespeare and he's profane as fuck. Unfortunately, fun characters and entertaining dialogue just couldn't carry a story that is just so bland, boring, and generic. And another thing that really annoyed me about this book is that there are so many flashbacks and flash forwards that at times in the book, it's almost impossible to tell what is actually going on and when it's supposed to be going on. I never really cared much for the con heist plot because frankly, they're usually all exactly the same. Some authors manage to make it work in a way that I enjoy, most don't. I can think of three fantasy books just off the top of my head right now that did it far better than this one. But you didn't finish this one, so you don't know. That's the thing that kills me. You're how that's why I don't when I finish books that I hate, people always ask me, like, do you not believe in DNFing? I believe that I cannot review a book if I've DNF'd it. And if I've put enough time into it where I've read, you know, a good chunk of it. I'm not going to waste, completely have it be a waste of my time and not be able to review it. So no, I don't DNF it because I want to be able to discuss it because I don't want to come off sounding like an ass, like this person who's like, the heist is just so like done to death. Like, but the book's not even fucking about a heist. It starts out with a heist and then you just were like, well, it's about that, so DNF. And I can state with absolute certainty and complete confidence that this whole book was about that heist, but it's, it's fucking not, bro. <laughs> You're just wrong. Again, you might've hated the book and that's fair, but you can't say you hate the book because the heist is done to death because it's not about a heist. <sighs> okay, I'm really frustrated by that review. And last but not least, The Wolf by Leo Caro, which again, I have read twice. <laughs> this is a less well-known book. Um, there's fewer reviews in general for it, so. Who dared give this a one star? Okay. First one. Oh, this is a kind of long. Okay. Have you ever read a book that you were so dead certain you would love because it incorporates everything you're interested in, but then are let down so horribly that you don't even know what you like anymore? <laughs> I was gonna say, the wolf does hit that spot for me. It's everything I could want in the book. Well, that is this book for me. War, Norse influence with a bloody twist and its own language. It sounded so cool to me. However, it was only an interesting premise the less than engaging plotline. Such a cool idea for a story. I really wish it delivered more for me. But it's perfect. What more could you want? <laughs> the writing style is really what did it in. It was just so to the point with little to no emotion added to it. It just seemed to drone on and on, the chapters each getting longer as you continue and it really was a struggle for me to finish. The book is very much founded on politics, but most of it is the kingdom's legions discussing politics and war but it all just seems to go around in circles and there are no decisive actions taken until the very end. I would disagree. The characters are also quite plain and it didn't seem like it was a priority to Karu to actually flesh them out. Roper, our main character, is intelligent, strong, and a born leader, but after fails as well as wins, he doesn't seem to grow at all and just remains the same emotionless character from start to finish. The rest of the characters each had a role to play, but again, they felt stuck in the role and didn't deviate at all. Where are the emotions and feelings in this? I just couldn't connect to anyone at all, and that contributed to my struggle. I actually talked about this in one of my videos, that the books are written, the, the people in them don't believe in being guided by emotion. They actively suppress their emotions. It's like part of their culture that's discussed in the book. It's not just like told to you and then we move on from it. Like they actively bring it up where like they start to feel emotion and then they're like, but I shouldn't be guided by that. Or like people will call each other out on it. It's called possession if you get too emotional. And it's like an active part of the story, the discussion of suppressing emotion. So it's not just like, there's no emotion in it because in the beginning we were told there wouldn't be. They're constantly actively discussing how they're not gonna be emotional about things. So it's like 
it's it's conspicuous by its intentional absence. <laughs> that makes sense. So like emotion plays a part of it by necessity because by actively suppressing it, it has to be present in the first place. Anyway, the plot is actually interesting though. Two warring kings. Okay, so this person just thought it was boring. Whatever, moving on. <laughs> 30 pages in, I give up. <laughs> I wouldn't write a review if I only read 30 pages. I would just say DNF. In fact, I don't read books that I DNF. I just put, I have a separate shelf on my Goodreads called DNF where there's no rating on it. It just takes it off of my other shelves because I, you can't actually know. Like you can be pretty sure, but you can't know. Anyway, story takes place in Albion, a common name for merry old England. Plot, manly men fight, women are arm candy. That's not the case. <laughs> what even happens in the first 30 pages? You don't even meet Katura, Roper's wife, until like well into the book. <laughs> oh my god. I've met this plot before in The Last Kingdom by Bernard. How do you know you've met this plot before when you've read 30 pages? How do you know? You can't know. I thought I'd love the book, but I don't care about any of the characters. The war is boring and the snark between enemies or friends falls very flat. You read 30 pages. Like maybe you weren't into it, but <laughs> how do you know? <laughs> you can't know. <laughs> oh my God. This book was terrible. I didn't finish it. There was no central idea. Things happened for no reason. And the author lacked a writing style. Where he should have been epic, he wrote in third person, where he should actually have described the battle that was that he was leading up to. He skips ahead, talks about something else entirely. I can think of one instance where that happens, but there's a very specific reason that happens narratively, and I think it's brilliant. But it was just the once and for that specific reason. There should have been more critical editing. There should have been more revisions, the sharpenings and focusings of this book before it went to press because it is not nearly realized enough to justify itself. What? The best part of this book by far was the world Caro created. Agreed. World building is tip top. Chef's kiss. But even this is confused. It is not. Disagree. <laughs> the story takes place in a medieval European type setting, but there are cannons and the protagonists use compressed gas for lighting. I don't say this as a question. I say it because it was confusing. This book was not quite fantasy and not historical fiction, and it was definitely not good enough to start its own genre. But it's an alternate history fantasy. It's not its own genre. Oh, by page 350, other books were calling, so I have moved. So they DNF'd it. Um, <laughs> oh, there are answers to those questions, but I don't think this person cares. Okay, well, I think that's gonna do it for reacting to one star reviews for my favorite books. If you enjoyed this video, please let me know um, and I can do it again with other favorite books. If there are particular favorite books of mine that like you know are my favorites, that you really want to see me react to one star reviews for, let me know and I can prioritize those for next time. If you never ever want to see a video like this from me again, let me know. <laughs> so I won't do it. <laughs> yep, let me know all the things. I post videos on Saturdays and also other random times, but definitely Saturdays, so like and subscribe and I'll see you when I see you. Bye.